بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم our integral is x from 0 to 1 the square of log 1 plus x squared over 1 plus x squared let's use the change of variables x equal to 10 theta when x is 0 theta is 0 when x is 1 theta is pi over 4 dx over 1 plus x squared is d theta log 1 plus x squared is minus log cosine squared theta that's minus 2 log cosine theta when we square we get 4 times the square of log cosine theta let's denote this integral by omega sub c Omega sub s is the same integral with cosine replaced by sine. If we add these two integrals, then it change theta here to pi over 2 minus theta. Cosine becomes sine. Theta is now from pi over 4 to pi over 2. We have the same integrand here and there. We can combine both integrals as an integral theta from 0 to pi over 2, the square of log sine theta. We have this series representation of log sine y. y is between 0 and pi over 2. Log sine y is equal to minus log 2 minus summation over positive integer v of cosine 2vy over v. Squaring, we get the square of log 2. We get 2 log 2 times the summation. We get the square of the sum, which is a double sum, v from 1 to infinity, l from 1 to infinity, cosine 2vy times cosine 2ly divided by vl. We integrate after swapping the order of integration and summation. The antiderivative of cosine 2vy is sine 2vy over 2v. When we use the limits of integration, we get sine 0 or sine pi times an integer that's zero this integral is zero for every positive integer v to integrate this product let's write it as one half cosine the sum 2y times v plus l plus one half cosine the difference 2y v minus l like what we got here when we integrate this cosine from zero to pi over two we get zero for that integral we also get zero so long as v is not equal to l if v is equal to l then this part is equal to one half when we integrate from 0 to pi over 2, we get pi over 4. This double sum becomes a single sum, v from 1 to infinity, 1 over v squared times pi over 4. The sum over v is zeta of 2, pi squared over 6. This double sum is pi cubed over 24. The last term to integrate is log 2 squared. The integral is just log 2 squared times pi over 2. The sum of these two integrals is pi cubed over 24 plus pi over 2 log 2 squared. Let's try to obtain the difference. The integrand is the difference between two squares. This is the sum of the logarithms multiplied by the difference. From here, we get log 10 theta. From there, we get log sine theta cosine theta. Let's do the change of variables. T equal to 10 theta. Theta is from 0 to pi over 4. T is from 0 to 1. Log 10 theta becomes log t. Sine theta is t over the square root of 1 plus t squared. Cosine theta is 1 over the square root of 1 plus t squared. This product is t over 1 plus t squared. d theta is dt over 1 plus t squared. The integrand is log t between brackets log t minus log 1 plus t squared, all divided by 1 plus t squared. We split into two integrals. Both were obtained in previous videos. This one is equal to pi cubed over 16. That one was more creepy. When we subtract this integral from that one, we get omega s minus omega c. Now we know the sum and the difference. Our integral of interest is 4 omega c. 2 omega c is the sum minus the difference. The integral of interest is minus 7 pi cubed over 96 minus 2 log 2 times Catalan's constant plus 7 pi log 2 squared over 8 plus 4 times the imaginary part of the trilogarithm of 1 plus i over 2. The second integral is x from 0 to 1 log x times the square of log 1 plus x times log 1 minus x all divided by x. The trick here is to employ this identity. We have the square of log 1 plus x times log 1 minus x. If we have alpha and beta, alpha plus beta cubed plus alpha minus beta cubed is 2 alpha cubed plus 6 alpha beta squared. This means that 6 alpha beta squared is alpha plus beta cubed plus alpha minus beta cubed minus 2 alpha cubed. Beta is log 1 plus x, alpha is log 1 minus x. So 6 times the integral of interest gives us integral x from 0 to 1, log x over x log 1 minus x minus log 1 minus log 1 plus x cubed plus log 1 minus x plus log 1 plus x cubed minus 2 the cube of log 1 minus x we split into three integrals this part here is the cube of log 1 minus x over 1 plus x this bracket is the cube of log 1 minus x squared in this integral use the substitution y equal to 1 minus x the integral becomes y from 0 to 1 the cube of log y, log 1 minus y over 1 minus y. 
What about the first integral? Let's do the change of variables y equal to 1 minus x over 1 plus x. This means that x is equal to 1 minus y over 1 plus y. When x is 0, y is 1. When x is 1, y is 0. dx is minus 2 dy over 1 plus y squared. We can use the minus sign to have the integral from 0 to 1. The integrand becomes the cube of log y times log 1 minus y over 1 plus y. Without the minus sign, dx over x is 2 dy over 1 minus y, 1 plus y. That's 1 minus y squared. Note that this integral can be split into four integrals. We can write the logarithm as log 1 minus y minus log 1 plus y. 2 divided by 1 minus y squared is 1 over 1 minus y plus 1 over 1 plus y. We get four terms when we multiply these two brackets. We still have this integral. Do the change of variables y equal to 1 minus x squared. This part becomes the cube of log y. Log x is 1 half log x squared, which is 1 half log 1 minus y. Minus 2x dx is equal to dy. So dx over x is equal to minus dy over 2x squared. And x squared is 1 minus y. After doing this multiplication and writing this integral as four integrals, together with these two integrals, we encounter the family of integrals y from 0 to 1, the cube of log y, log 1 plus or minus y over 1 plus or minus y. These are old friends expressed in terms of zeta of 5, zeta of 4, log 2, and the product of zeta of 2 and zeta of 3. Using their values and simplifying, we get that omega, the integral of interest, integral x from 0 to 1, log x, the square of log 1 plus x, log 1 minus x, all over x. This integral is equal to minus 25 zeta of 5 over 16, plus 7, zeta of 2 times zeta of 3 divided by 8.